I'd like to take this time to welcome you to the Jackson United Methodist Church on this second Sunday of Easter. And even though we are all apart physically, we are all one church still in God. And we just look forward to that day when we can all come back together and worship again as one body in our church. But in the meantime, we're still going to enjoy our worship together and we are going to pray for each other, pray for our city, our county, and pray for our country, for everyone's health and well-being. So again, welcome to Jackson United Methodist Church, and I hope you enjoy our morning worship.
Good morning, everybody. It's great to be in worship with you at Jackson United Methodist Church once again as we celebrate this Easter season. This day, we want to bring you some hope. We want to bring you some rejoicing and enjoyment. And I know you've already enjoyed the hymns and the praises that have already brought us to this point in our service. And uh, before we go into our time of prayer, I just want to encourage you to be a part of what God is doing in our hearts and lives in this season. And one way we want to help encourage you to do that is uh, we're doing a men's group on Zoom and a ladies group on Zoom coming up on Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. And we'd love to have anybody be a part of that that wants to be a part of that, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're somewhere in between. Uh, I'll be leading the men's group at 6.30 on Tuesday, and Sonia is going to be leading a ladies group on Thursday afternoon as well. If you're interested in that, just contact the church office by email or contact me, and we'd love to have you be a part of uh, just a time of encouragement of one another in those seasons. We want to encourage you right now uh, by uh, preparing our hearts for prayer. And uh, so our prayers go out to our community and nation and world in this moment. And we want to be praying for you. We want to invite you to be praying for us too. So in this moment, will you join me? And let us go to the Father together for a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we love and praise you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and mercy and grace and love. Uh, we are blessed that we can call you our Father. We are blessed that you are the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and Father of all creation. And Lord, we pray that we will know you as our Father in these moments right now. Lord, forgive us of our sin. We come to you asking that you'd touch our hearts cleanse our lives, encourage us, and guide us. Lord, I pray that you would be at work in our community and nation and world. Father, we pray for those who are sick, especially those who are sick with the coronavirus. We pray for their healing in Jesus' name. We, we come against this virus by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we trust that your love will be at work seeing us through this season of challenge and trial and oh god we pray especially for those uh, that are out front we pray for our nurses and doctors we pray for the hospital staff lord we pray for uh, those that are continuing to work in the supermarkets and the restaurants and the uh, truck uh, industry that uh, provides all the stuff and resources we need Lord, continue to bless, continue to strengthen, continue to guide, as we thank you for continuing to see our economy through these tough times. Come, Holy Spirit, and comfort those who've lost jobs. Uh, give them faith, give them strength. And Lord, help us be your hands and feet to try our best to encourage them today and, and find ways to help them and, and uh, give them another day of hope to see, see them through. Lord, we just pray for your wisdom to guard our country uh, from our leaders to our military, to our paramedics and firefighters. Lord, let your grace be evident and made known. Father, uh, we pray that you'll be at work all over the world today. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Lord, we're excited to see how you will use these moments for the coming to faith in Jesus, for growing your kingdom, for reaching new people, for helping people that maybe haven't thought about you for years to come back to faith and say, you know what, Lord, I need you. I want you. Uh, come into my life and heart once again. So Holy Spirit, come and do your good work mightily over us today as we pray the prayer of Jesus that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's our privilege to bring to you today uh, another new song called Good Grace, uh, which is by Hillsong. 
and to share that with you. We want you to receive God's good grace in this moment. Uh, we invite you to find the lyrics on the internet to sing along with us as uh, we celebrate the good grace of a loving Father today. celebration and our resurrection and our hope in our life. May his kingdom come. Thank you.
girls. Thanks for helping us out this morning. And uh, I'll let them go as we get ready for the message today. Our message this morning, we're going to be turning to 1 Peter, because I want us to find some hope in troubled times. And 1 Peter is a letter that he wrote to a church that was going through some rough spots and going through some challenges of themselves. And so they found some hope in their troubled times. And uh, that hope came through the Apostle Peter. And uh, we want to share that hope with you today. The word comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, where the Apostle Peter writes these words. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials these have come so that your faith may prove genuine of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may result in the praise and glory and honor when jesus christ is revealed and though you have not seen him you love him and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. You're filled with an indescribable and a, and a glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. This is the word of God for you and me, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, I just ask that your spirit would come and speak through my words and speak through our time together in our worship this morning to help us encounter your love, encounter your goodness, encounter your hope, encounter your rejoicing presence. Lord, I thank you for the resurrection of Jesus. And may it bring hope to us all. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Guys, as I, we come to you on the Sunday after our Easter celebration, we want to continue with the good news of resurrection in Christ Jesus. We want to celebrate and give thanks like Peter was doing 2,000 years ago. We want to give thanks that we have a good and loving Father who is the Father of our lives and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and who is our loving Father has showered us and graced us with mercy upon mercy and love upon love. And we have been over, over drowned, I guess you might say, in the mercy of Jesus. And it's in that mercy and goodness of the Father that I want to encourage you today to be a person of hope in these troubled times. We want you not just to find hope in circumstances. Instead, we want you to find resurrection hope in who Jesus is and in the salvation that Jesus offers you and me and all of us today. And it's that salvation hope that we want to rejoice in. And so, First Peter tells us, that in God's great mercy, he's given us some great things, a, a great salvation. And in that great salvation, it comes to us as 
as a new birth. Jesus is, is trying to beget in your life and in my life, in birth in our life, something new, something that's never happened before, a, a new way of living, a new way of trusting, a new way of loving, a new way of even dying. And that new way is the life that God brings in Jesus Christ. And he says, this new birth is accomplishing for us hope for today and an inheritance for tomorrow. Hope for today and an inheritance for tomorrow. And so we celebrate the hope and inheritance that Jesus has come to bring. Uh, Peter writes for us that we have this new birth in a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And this living hope, guys, uh, I believe what Peter's trying to get to is this is a hope for today. It's a hope that's alive. It's a hope that we can experience here, now, presently, no matter what circumstances come your way or my way, no matter what things we face. A resurrection hope is born anew. Because Jesus is no longer dead, because he conquered death that we celebrated last week, because he has risen from the dead, we have a new hope. We have a living hope. We have something that circumstances cannot take from your life. Something circumstances can't take from my life and our lives. And it gives us something to hang on to no matter how desperate and how broken and how at rock bottom we feel like our lives have become. Life cannot be hopeless because Jesus has conquered death and there is always hope that God will do something new in your life today. Hang on to the hope you see today in Jesus Christ. Hang on to his resurrection today in Jesus Christ because this is a living hope that will not spoil or falter or fade. And it's a living hope, Peter writes, into a future inheritance, into a future inheritance. Peter talks about that, uh, that God has given us a great salvation and he has saved us from death, he saved us from the grave, and we only get a foretaste of this salvation right here, right now. And that foretaste comes to us through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. As you say yes to Jesus, as you say yes to letting the Holy Spirit be at work in your life, a future inheritance is coming, Peter writes. An inheritance that will not perish, will not spoil, will not fade. And in the same way, it's, a, it's an inheritance that that can't be destroyed. It's an inheritance that can't be defeated. It's an inheritance that can't be diminished. It's an inheritance that can't be diluted. It's an inheritance that will be with us forever. And so we celebrate this inheritance kept in heaven for us. This inheritance that's far away for now, but will be drawn nearer to us. And so, as Peter goes on, he says, listen, guys, this is our hope. This is our inheritance. It will not spoil. It will not fade. And it's guarded by God's power for your life and my life today. This inheritance, this hope, this salvation is guarded by Jesus Christ. It's guarded by the power of the living God. It's guarded to protect, most of all, your faith and my faith and our faith together. You see, because it is faith that will help see us through this world of challenging circumstances. It's our faith that'll see us through this world of challenging circumstances. You see, Peter knew 
as Jesus knew, as the prophets of old knew, and the leaders of old knew, that, um, that guys, this is a world filled with challenges. This is a world filled with trials and tribulations, filled with temptations and turmoil, and that's not going to change. Um, one of the youth in our time together this week asked a really good question. He said, Chris, if Jesus came and healed the sick 2,000 years ago, then why does God allow COVID uh, virus to, to spread throughout the world? Why doesn't he just snap his fingers and heal everybody and just make this thing disappear? And that's a question that uh, people have been asking for thousands of years. It was a great question. But Peter here gives us a sense of the answer that God has placed us in this world. He's placed us in this world for a purpose, for his good purpose. And being part of this world is to be a part of a world that does have bad circumstances. A world where we can lose our job, a world where we can get sick, a world where loved ones can die. Um, but it's a world that as well will give us an opportunity to grow as human beings into children of the Father. Guys, we have a chance here in this world of trials and tribulations to grow a faith and a hope and a joy that this world can't take away. Let me say that again. God has given us a place in this world so that we can develop a faith, a hope, and a joy, and a righteousness that this world cannot take away from your life and my life, no matter what we go through. And so that's what Peter talks about in the second half of this passage. He says, listen, guys, your faith is protected by the power of God. And your faith is of greater worth in your life to who you are right now and to who you're going to become tomorrow and the next day and the next week. That faith is more precious for your life than gold or silver or amassing a fortune of money. And he says, as gold will one day be destroyed, gold that has gone through the fire and been purified, that is what the trials and tribulations and challenges we face today are meant to do in and through your life and my life. You see, Jesus didn't escape trials and tribulation and temptation. Jesus carried the cross all the way to his death. And as he carried the, world, the worst the world threw at him, he embraced God's resurrection power. He embraced God's resurrection life. And because of that, he has been declared today Lord of all. And in the same way, what Peter says is, as we hang on through challenging trials that we face sometimes in this world, it will give us a chance to grow our faith, to say, Jesus, I still trust you because I know you defeated the worst this world threw at you and you defeated death. And so you will help me do that too. And, and, and Peter writes, when we begin to have this kind of faith, we can't help but rejoice. We can't help but put a smile on our face. We can't help but be glad. We can't help but, but have a positive attitude. We can't help but have an audacious hope that, that people look at us and say, where did that come from? Because we have found a faith that is greater worth than gold. And as God grows that faith in your trials, it grows in our hearts a love for our Father. It grows in our lives a love for Jesus and a, and a love for the Holy Spirit that can't be taken away. You know, guys, uh, I've never met Jesus face to face. And I know none of us have met Jesus face to face. And those that Peter was writing to that day, 2,000 years ago, Peter acknowledges, he says, listen, I know none of you 
uh, of the church here in in the area which is now known in, as Turkey back then it was Asia Minor he said to the Christians there he says listen I know you have not seen him but you know what even without seeing him you love him don't you love him don't you love the gift and hope and promise he's offered us? Don't you love the inheritance that we have for us that, that we can't see yet except for the presence of the Holy Spirit? It's out there. It seems far away, but, but the hope is there that it will one day be yours and it will be one day be mine. He says, even though we don't see Jesus, we love him. And even we, though we don't see Jesus right here and right now, we trust him. We trust him. Brothers and sisters, don't you trust Jesus with me now? Don't you want to place that faith in him even more? And as you place that faith in him, as you trust him, you cannot help but just say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you that you are turning my faith into something that will shape me into the child of God you want me to be. Thank you that you've declared I'm a prince of the king. Thank you that you've declared I'm a princess of the king of kings and lord of lords. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just rejoice. I give thanks because you're with me and you will see me through. And that inheritance you've promised cannot disappear, cannot be diminished, cannot be spoiled, cannot be taken away. It's permanent. And because of that, I can rejoice today. Now, you know what? I wonder if Peter, as he's writing this, was thinking back to one of his moments with the Lord Jesus. There was a time, Luke tells us in his gospel, when in Luke 10, verse 20, where uh, where Luke says, you know what, guys? Um, well, this is the story. Let me get it right for sure. Uh, he had sent 72 of his disciples, 72 followers out to preach and teach and, and deliver people from evil and pray for people to be healed and, and just be at work doing kingdom ministry like we're we're still called to do kingdom ministry today. And as the disciples came back, they came back rejoicing because they had seen God's presence and power do some amazing ministry and bring some amazing healing and deliver people from evil that had been charged of their lives and caused people trouble and sorrow and addiction and all sorts of junk. And so they were rejoicing at what they had seen and what they'd been included in. And Jesus turns to them and says, listen, guys, don't rejoice at, at your ability to, 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 to defeat evil. That's, that's good, but don't rejoice in that. Instead, Jesus says, rejoice in that your names are written in heaven. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. And that's what Peter's talking about. That we're to rejoice in that his name, it's been written in heaven. Your name and my name, if we will have faith, has been written in heaven. That's why we rejoice, Peter tells us. And it's a hope that will never disappoint us or get us down. And so I hope that you'll have a living hope today. Don't let it dissipate. I hope you'll embrace your inheritance today. It's great to, to think of all the good things that are coming, a, a new resurrection body, a, a, a body that'll never spoil or fade, that'll never die again, that, that'll be able to rejoice in, in the presence of the living God, that'll be able to be about God's purpose in the universe in whatever way, shape, or form that takes in eternity. It'll be a life of adventure. It'll be a more real life than we experience right here and right now. And that we'll have a faith that is strong, that sees us through tough times. I close uh, with the story of, it's, it's a neat testimony that I've heard. And, and I just, 
It's a story of hope and rejoicing. Uh, and a fellow's name, his, his name's Earl Smith. And Earl grew up in a family that had everything. Had money, had wealth, had whatever he wanted. In fact, had so much stuff that Earl uh, didn't really have to grow up and do anything. He had all that he could ever want. And so as a result, he got into the party lifestyle. He got into drugs. He got into hard drugs and addictive drugs. And in fact, things turned bad for him, so bad that he overdosed at the age of 30 and landed in the hospital. And there in the hospital, uh, a friend brought him a New Testament. I don't know what kind of New Testament. Maybe it was a Gideon's New Testament, but whatever it was, he was happy to get it. He said, oh, great, thanks. Because as he looked at it and as he looked at the thin pages, he said, you know what? These pages would be perfect for uh, smoking marijuana. <laughs> and so he, uh, he rolled his way through Matthew. He rolled his way through Mark. He rolled his way through Luke. But by the time he got to John, he said, you know what? Maybe you ought to actually read and see what this book has to say. And as he read John's gospel, he experienced the hope of the resurrection of Jesus. As he read through John's gospel, he experienced the new birth that uh, the Lord Jesus offers to be born again. And as he said yes to Jesus, um, he became a new person. He became a person of outrageous hope. He became a person that believed in this incredible inheritance, a greater inheritance than he'd ever experienced. And his whole family began to take notice. And, and he was going to a psychiatrist at the time. And the psychiatrist was a young lady named Tommy. And as he was sitting there telling Tommy his story that day, Tommy said, you know what, Earl, I, I just don't get it. Here, here I am. I've got the perfect job. I've got a great life, a great family. I've got lots of money too. And, and, and well, my life's empty. And I don't know why. But Earl, I look at you and, and your life has been chaotic. It's been a huge mess. And yet you have this incredible peace and hope. What is it? And so Earl got up and told her about the Jesus he'd encountered in the New Testament. This Jesus that had brought him a living hope that had transformed his life. And Tommy, as well, decided to explore this relationship with Jesus and give her heart to Jesus Christ and encounter that new hope for herself and encounter the filling of the emptiness that she'd had before. And it just it changed both of their lives because Earl ended up marrying Tommy. He ended up going into full-time ministry. And, uh, but most of all, what, you'll, what I hope you'll receive today is they both found a living hope in Jesus Christ. They both embraced a greater inheritance than any money could ever buy or anything you could ever have. And they grew a faith that would enable them to go through tough times together and become the children of God that God wants them to be. How about you? How about you? Do you have that living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead? Have you embraced the inheritance that the Father wants to lavish on you in heaven? Have you rejoiced in your salvation that your sins are forgiven? If you never have, I hope you will today. And if you did years ago, but maybe your heart has turned a little sad, I hope today you'll recommit your life to Jesus Christ, that you may find hope anew now and forever. In the name of our incredible Father, and the loving Son, the Lord Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, for anyone watching,
today who is discouraged, who is down, who feels like they're swamped by their circumstances and about to drown. Lord, for those today, I pray, help them reach out for your living hope. Help them have faith in what you want for them. And Lord, I pray that if someone's watching and they've never said yes to Jesus, but if you're ready to say yes, then I invite you to do it now. All it takes is being honest with God and saying, Lord, I've never done this before, but I want to give you my heart and life. I'm tired of being on empty. I'm tired of letting circumstances sway my emotions. I want your living hope today. So, Father, forgive me for staying far away from you. Instead, come, Lord Jesus, forgive my sin. Make me into something new. Give me your living hope. Give me a heart that rejoices in your salvation and shape a faith in me that will stand the test of time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Thanks for being with us today. Go in the love of a Father that will not let you go. Go in the love of our Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And go in the love of the Holy Spirit. God's power to save you and redeem you and love you. We pray that you'll join with us in this last song of worship. And we'll look forward to seeing you again next week with hope in your heart and rejoicing on your lips because of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Amen.